the first term I'm going to keep it as the same this term I'm going to put this one back in here Then the first term and the third term on the right should have the similar structure, so I'm going to combine them. Okay, then the whole equation here has unit and it is a unit of temperature because this is temperature and you have temperature unit in K here. So if I take this part, divide the whole equation, you will have dimensionless form. Uh, may I write it down over there? The term on the left has no unit, it is dimensionless. The ratio x over b would be dimensionless as well. So this term, that term and that term has no unit. It means that the whole term in this parenthesis here or in this bracket is supposed to be dimensionless as well. If you check the unit for viscosity over thermal conductivity, times velocity square over t, you get dimensionless. This dimensionless form is called Brinkman number. And Brinkman number here is very important telling you how significant the viscous heat is, your, is, is it in your system. If Brinkman number is high, that means in your system there will be high amount of viscous heat. Or that means the work has done or has been given to the system high enough to convert the internal energy to be increased. The temperature will be increased. The common term will be increase of energy by friction. Okay. As I said earlier, high Brinkman number can take place in two cases. First, high velocity. The high, vis high Brinkman number can take place when you have high velocity here or viscosity is high. Example of the first one would be when you look into, uh, you know, meteorite, meteorite or rocket or space shuttle. 
when it's returned to Earth. Normally, we say it's burning up by friction with atmosphere. But in fact, if you take our coordinate to be with the object falling down the sky, that means object can, can consider as stay still. And atmosphere is moving toward that object. Velocity is extremely high. So therefore, the work is done of viscous heat take, takes place by the fluid movement can be converted into internal energy in extreme amount. And temperature of the object lights up. That's the first case, when Brinkman number is high. The second case is extrusion of polymer through small holes. Polymer would have extremely high viscosity. So if you force them through very small holes, you somehow use somewhat like a friction toward that polymer, it would heat up as well. Heat up until the temperature is high enough. Sometimes polymer can be melt even further after you try to squeeze them through small holes. Okay? So these are two kinds when Brinkman number is significant. Other than this, normally we just drop the term viscous heat. So for conventional flow, the term associated with viscous heat is normally neglected. All right? Any question? We still have some time left, but I think I'm going to stop it at this moment. If there is no other question, that's it for today. See you on Friday. <laughs>